Welcome to your Heart on My Sleeve Masterclass. All the slides you'll see today will be available for download. So while we encourage you to take notes, don't feel like you need to record everything now. You can go back and revisit any details later. Your facilitator for this masterclass is Julia Hearn. That's me. There's the full bio, but you can read that later. Let me give you a quick summary. I've been the general manager of Heart on My Sleeve since 2020. And before that, I was one of the trainers. I've got a background in instructional design and educational psychology with a specific interest in delivering impactful online learning experiences, which came in pretty handy during the COVID shutdown when we had to shift everything from a classroom style environment to video conferencing. We do these masterclasses live as well, which enables more participant involvement, but I know how hard it is to get busy people in a room together, or even just to allocate yourself 30 uninterrupted minutes. So here we are with the on-demand version. You will have the capability to comment and ask questions, which I'll show you in a sec. So while I do have professional experience building and delivering educational programs for various organizations and schools, I think what most qualifies me for this role is my lived and living experience of trauma and mental ill health. The challenges I had, while deeply impactful, were far too common. And I spent the first three decades of my life feeling confused and highly dysregulated. I had never sought help or spoken openly about my experiences. I started therapy in my late 20s and I got some diagnoses and treatment plans and I spent the best part of the next two decades unraveling my past and making sense of how the impacts were playing out in the present. These days, the most powerful ways I take care of my mental health are having fully remote work, practicing recovery and therapy every day as if I was doing a PhD in it. That includes 12-step program, cognitive therapy, mindful embodiment. I include animals in my immediate family. I live among nature. I nurture meaningful relationships and I apply well-thought-out chosen paradigms to my life instead of conditioned ways of thinking and behaving. That's what keeps me sane on a daily basis. And for those of us with chronic mental ill health conditions, it's really important that we pay attention to our changing needs and reevaluate our treatment as required. I also have incredible role models and guides, and I hope to be a role model one day myself, because the truth of the matter is that healing is not linear. There will always be people a few steps behind or a few steps ahead of you. Well-being isn't a competitive sport. And there's no finish line. You win every day by treating yourself and others with kindness. Before we get started, you remember that I said that the challenges I experienced were far too common. So I want to take this moment to acknowledge your lived experience. We won't be going too deep with the themes we'll be exploring, but nonetheless, take your time as you go through this lesson. If something feels activating to your nervous system, take breaks or do it with somebody else if that helps. Okay, let's get started. This session is about overcoming your limiting beliefs. How do you find the courage to speak up? The courage to overcome internal and external stories that are getting in your way of seeking help. By the end of this session, you will understand your personal roadblocks to speaking up and learn how to create a model to challenge your limiting thoughts and identify your personal motivation to speak up. This next part is going to show you where to find more resources on the Holmes website. From the Heart on My Sleeve homepage, click on the menu in the top right-hand corner and then go over to the left column and click the first one, Speak Up. This takes you to our Speak Up resources. Scroll down through all the tips that we have there and you'll access free training. Click on watch full training and that will take you to our suite of video resources. When you scroll down, the first thing you'll see is an option to download guide. That's a workbook for people who would rather do it in a textbook style. So all of the videos are set out as chapters and there are exercises in each chapter to help you integrate the learning outcomes. So the videos there cover our entire Speak Up training series, not just the things that you'll be learning about in this particular masterclass. You can consume this content start to finish, or you can just go and access each video as you need it. 
Now, even though this masterclass is recorded, we would still love to gather your comments and your questions. And we're going to do that using a platform called Slido. So take your phone right now and point it at the QR code, and that will take you right to the HOMS masterclass Q&A page on that platform. If you'd rather use your computer instead of the phone, just open up a new tab and search Slido. Enter the code 1334. This is what it's going to look like on your computer, and this is what it looks like on your mobile. When you enter your question or your comment, you can leave your name, but most people prefer to stay anonymous. When we receive your questions, we record our answers and we post them on YouTube. There's a couple there already. In a previous masterclass where we had live polling, we asked participants this question, how challenging is it for you to speak up when you're not okay? And the answer was fairly reassuring. Nobody said, I keep it all to myself. And I guess that there might be a skewed data set given that people who attend a mental health masterclass are probably already quite proactive in seeking out help for their well-being. But 73% of people say, I usually tell people I can trust. And that is the key. And it also correlates with the data and research and surveying we're seeing in the last couple of years, which reports that about 75% of people feel comfortable talking about their mental health. And that is up by 25% from about five or six years ago. But if you fall in that 9% there, I really struggle. It takes time. You're not alone. And today we're going to look at some of the things that might help you feel more comfortable. Now, it's going to be different for everyone. So as we go through these reasons why it's hard to speak up, see if you can identify the ones that resonate with you. What's common to a lot of us, though, is avoiding pain. It's much easier to shove things down and not think about them. Isn't it much easier to numb or distract ourselves? Some of us might have been conditioned from a very, very early age in culture or religion or our family that these things are not talked about. And also, why talking about them hurt? Why would I want to bring up things I haven't thought about for ages? Won't that hurt? So a lot of us don't speak up because we think it's going to be more pain than it's worth. Another reason we won't seek help for our well-being is perception from others. For some reason, we believe that others will look at us differently if they knew about our well-being struggles, our symptoms, or our diagnoses. And in some cases, that may be true. It's important for you to look around you at your communities, your family, and see how safe it is for you to talk about your well-being. The other part that stops us is self-judgment. We can be our worst inner critic, can't we? That feeling of, I should be able to handle this. I shouldn't be experiencing this. I should be stronger than that. All these shoulds, we keep shooting all over ourselves, and it's not helpful. We judge our capabilities. We judge what we're deserving of and we set boundaries with other people when actually perhaps they would have been happy to be there for us. So that internal stigma is something that may make it difficult for you to speak up. The last one is other beliefs. Any reason you could think of. I'm washing my hair, I'm taking the bins out. But more often they're related to history or trauma or culture or religion or something else that's impacting your capability to speak up. I'd like to invite you to do an activity and pause this if you need to, to think about what your personal roadblocks are now that you've heard about those four general categories and reflect on in the past or right now, what stopped you from speaking up? Why is it hard? And if you can go to Slido and enter that in there, it's valuable information for us because once we know what's stopping people, we can provide better resources to help them. One of those resources is the incredible work of Byron Katie and many other writers, researchers, and clinicians who are focusing on challenging limiting beliefs. So there's a four-step process that Byron Katie is quite famous for. Once you have your limiting belief in your mind, apply these four questions to it. Is that true? Believing something's true doesn't always make it true. So she goes on to ask, can you absolutely know it's true? What evidence do you have? And then regardless of whether it's true or not, what happens to you when you believe that thought? What happens to your perception of others when you believe that thought? And the fourth question is, who would you be without that thought? In four questions, we've challenged that limiting belief 
found out, regardless of whether it's true or not, what would it be like if we didn't have that thought? So pause right there if you'd like to apply these four questions to challenge the limiting belief that you've just come up with for yourself. Okay, so we've talked about why it's hard and what is holding us back. Now let's look at why we should speak up. The first thing is, what's in it for me? Could I potentially feel relief? Could I get the help that I need? Could it create more authentic relationships between me and the people that I'm opening up to? We all deserve to seek help and receive help. So what's in it for you? That's the first one. The second thing is what's in it for others. So many of us think I'm going to be a burden. They don't want to help me. But do you know that being of service to somebody else increases self-esteem? When I get to help you, I feel better about myself. So why wouldn't we give them that opportunity? And what an honor it would be to feel closer to you, to feel that you've opened up to me and you've trusted me. That is going to be something that would help the relationship thrive. And the last one is what's in it for everyone. When you speak up about your well-being, you become a role model. Whatever you're going through, there is somebody else going through something similar and they're suffering in silence. They are still too afraid to speak up. Just like you were probably nervous about speaking up, so are they. When you show how it can be done, it gives them the confidence to do the same. I know from experience of having a very serious condition called BPD, borderline personality disorder, of how stigmatizing it can be. And I made the very bold choice to be open and public about having that particular diagnosis. And since I did that, I have had friends open up to me that they also have that diagnosis. I've had colleagues and people in professional settings feel that they can be authentic with me about a family member who has that diagnosis. When I speak openly about my symptoms, my well-being, and when I ask for help, I give everybody around me permission to do the same. So you might be seeking help for yourself, but that's how it's helping other people as well. And that brings us to the end of our masterclass. Thank you so much for joining us for this session. We would love it if you would point your phone at that QR code and leave some feedback because when we know what you valued and what you took away from this session, we can then apply that to help others learn in the future. See you at the next one.